It's now time for our first panel discussion here up on stage. We'll have some rearranging of the furniture. Uh, we have uh, four people in the panel. Uh, they're headed up here. We have Osa Elmstam. Osa is jewelry craftsman with a focus on sustainability. We have Pietro Modesti, who's a film director involved in climate action. And we have Grant Price. And Grant Price will have his first climate novel out in September. He is British, uh, but living currently in Berlin. And we have Klaus Thuyman who is director of Project Pressure, which is a charity visualizing climate change. Um, and uh, Klaus, you also have a degree in environmental science. And I guess there is a chair for me too. Wonderful. All right. What would you like to say about what you just heard uh, on the sharing of good examples? Would you like to start? Um, well, uh, I mean, as a writer, I'm always thinking about those things, uh, trying to set uh, examples. Um, and try to connect the dots, basically. Mm. Um, but I don't believe in, like, solving any, everything at once. I believe in telling different stories, uh, which connects the dots and makes, like, connection to, to yourself, basically. And w what are your shortcomings and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, while you're at it, could you please tell us about how you work, your film director, right. and how does that connect? Would you work with climate climate uh, action? Um, I'm I'm writing um, several feature films. Um, they're in different stages right now. Um, for myself as a director, sometimes a couple of them are with me as a director, and uh, a couple is uh, just a screenwriter. Or Great, because we haven't seen many. I mean, no. Dear Tomorrow. Uh, and not really. I mean, the day after tomorrow, and that's about it. Yeah, so we need yeah. we need more uh, in this well, field. Well, we need like an anthology of stories because the the enemy or the antagonist in real life is uh, climate change is like an enemy with a thousand heads, basically. Mm -hmm. So we need we need like all the stories we can achieve, um, big, small, set, present time, in the future, like Grant's mm. novel, and um, yeah, yeah, thank you as much as possible. <laughs> Greg Price, uh, tell us about your work. Okay, so the, the, the novel is, um, so it takes place against the backdrop of uh, a world ravaged by global warming and explores uh, what it means to be a human being um, when you no longer have social structures, infrastructure, when we've severed our connection to nature and when you can no longer rely on other people. And I think uh, I kind of focused on this because we, as artists now have a, a very big opportunity to engage with the, the one subject that matters. Um, so like in the 1920s, you had the lost generation, 1960s, you had the counterculture movement, and now we are the, the climate generation. And so to, to ignore that would be, um, it wouldn't be right. I mean, you'd be missing a, a, a huge audience. It's, I mean, you have an audience of seven billion people because it affects everybody. So um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's why I chose to, to, to focus on this, this future like this uh, what the world could look like it's, it's exaggerated but it's um it's, it's based on fact and the title of your book is by the feet of men yes um that's a uh, part of a quote by henry david thoreau mm -hmm. which says uh, the world is soft and impressionable by the feet of men and so mm -hmm. the uh the path that the mind walks and that basically means we, it's very easy for human beings to get stuck in a rut and think in the same ways that we've always been thinking. Mm. But there are other alternatives and we can think outside the box and we can approach the, the problem from different angles. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm. Look forward to reading your book. Thanks. And watching your films, of course. Also, Amstam, uh, you're a jewelry <laughs> designer and that might be, oh, that's a bit odd. How do you, how do you relate to climate uh, action? Yeah. Um, after studying in art school, craft-based art, school, art schools for many years. I graduated in Stockholm and uh, Tokyo and fell down in a deep depression, like realizing 2007 mm. that the climate crisis... It, I, it, yeah, I understood it, 2007, mm. and I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? Because I can't continue doing this, producing things to a society which doesn't need any more things produced. Mm. And after a little while, I, after the deep, being deep, deep down, I realized that I have to use my skills, my craft, to communicate and, and um, uh, visualize my problems uh, or the, the world's problems instead, try to, do, try to work it 
with my in my way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using my craft skills to try to visualize for a broader public. And you communicate in your art, but also with the uh, the, the, the sort of packaging or text or explanations that will make people understand. Do I understand? It's not. I don't do commercial jewelry at all. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do like unique pieces for exhibitions or for projects. So every mostly I'm doing very unique pieces, just like art pieces, small mm -hmm. art pieces. Wonderful, and then yeah. people will understand in the context of it all. Yeah, terrific. So, Klaus Thiemann, uh, tell us about your work, and I know Project Pressure, uh, we're interested in what that is. Yeah, I founded Project Pressure in 2008, and that was with the idea of visualizing climate change with a clear view that scientific facts, uh, they've been known for decades. Mm. I mean, it, it would go back to the 70s, late 70s, we knew about climate change. The facts haven't changed. How they've been communicated, denied, whatever, that, that, that's a whole narrative uh, that we've gone through. What I felt uh, was needed was a visualization of climate change that had a little bit of hope, that had an inspirational touch point where you could engage with a really incredibly depressing subject in a positive way. So it wouldn't be arms on cross, it would be, okay, this is something I can love and embrace. That's mm. what art can do. Art can make people Absolutely. feel, it can capture the emotions. And with Project Pressure, we thought, what is the best way of visualizing climate change? Well, we've gone through the wildfires, the flooding, blah, 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 and, and they're all weather-related. Glacier recession is 100% attributed to climate change, and such as such are key indicators. It also goes back to landscape art, and is a very uh, broad category within the art spectrum. So that's why we chose to visualize climate change uh, using glaciers. Uh, having developed that project, we're launching a traveling exhibition this year called Meltdown, a visualization of climate change that will be traveling to museums. But we have a small preview here with some posters that uh, mix the art uh, with some hard hitting facts. Thank you, Klaus. We're going to move down in a few minutes to, to watch, look at the, look at the posters. Um, so, uh, what references do you see, all of you, anybody can answer, uh, between your work and just the hard facts that you've been presented earlier on this day? What, how can you sort of interact and relate on a deeper and a deeper level. Grant, would you like well, I to? Think, I think, as I said before, you, the facts are all well and good and it's very interesting and, and you get all these uh, graphs and, and whatever, but um, at some point you need somebody to, to take those facts and turn mm. it into a story and make it something, make the unpalatable palatable. Um, I mean, you still need this underlying sense of discomfort, but you need to take the facts and use them as building blocks for something else, something that people can digest. Because the more you, you bombard people with uh, sort of raw data, the less they're going to be receptive to it. They, they switch off. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, like a sandwich. You need, you, you've, got, you've got the filling, but you need to put the bread there so you can actually eat it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with art, then, it's, it's a way of presenting that in a way that people can actually take on and understand. Um, especially like in a place like this, um, there's a lot of very intelligent people here. There's a lot of scientists. And it's people who understand this data, but um, this is kind of an echo chamber. You need... Mm. Uh, you need art to speak to people who won't necessarily be watching this, who might not come to a place like this, but they might go into a store and pick up a book. They might go uh, to a, a gallery and, and look at some photos. Mm. So you, that's what you need, basically. Mm. Well, Sandin Klaus, uh, when people see your jewellery, how do they respond? It's hard for me to know sometimes how they respond, but... I had a few moments when people really act and responded very emotional, mm. which is fantastic. And if you're present, you can open up for a dialogue yeah, yeah, with, of course. with them about climate action. Yeah, I, I do. I've been doing a film. You can see it down there in one of the small rooms uh -huh. as well. And lots of different objects and sculptures. But mostly I'm doing things that are body related and walking around with a piece of art jewelry on you, which says mm, something mm. about the climate really that has an impact on like power in in spreading a spreading something absolutely. that you want to say yeah absolutely mm. klaus yeah for, for me there's there's something with time and timings and and that that we need to discuss and address and uh having discussed the glacier recession which is a known phenomenon as a glacier speed mm. is kind of ironic because what is happening is that the projections of the scientific reports 
Oh, actually, the uh, the disaster zone is being downgraded. Yes, it's, it's happening sooner than we thought. Uh, ten years ago, oh, there's thirty years now. There's there's there isn't time. I mean, let's forget it. Climate change is happening now. It's not wildfires tomorrow. It's, it's last year. The earth is burning. This is happening now. We have an exp- exponential time acceleration of the consequences. Yet we're discussing solutions that are linear in in response, and we're responding as if. We have a linear uh, path to choose, and we don't. We, we, we have to take very drastic steps right the second. And, and the solutions we're discussing as privileged individuals aren't enough. Uh, it, there, there are industries that need to change, the, the governments need to change, and it needs to happen not tomorrow but now. That's the thing, and that's the urgency, and that's the, that's the thing that I find so difficult to, to get across, is that there just is not time. Like it needs to happen now. And of course, in the field of art, there lies a possibility of really sort of breaking through those barriers and those walls quicker than anything else. Do you agree? Yeah. Mm. Uh, like you said before, um, um, the day after tomorrow was one of the first. Or mm, well, um, it's about climate change, but still, I, I don't know how much. There was a lot of good intention, but I don't know how mm. much good it. Mm, uh, actually achieved, but uh, yeah, I think a movie like Interstellar maybe uh, gave some sort of recognition to it mm-hmm. because uh, um, Interstellar it's about the Dust Bowl period in, in the US and it's also very connected to 0.1 uh, centigrade uh, warming the, that w- world where Oklahoma and uh, that area turns into basically a desert but I was thinking that stuff that Grant mentioned before, you mentioned trust, which is something that I've, um, I've seen. I mean, I'm working with four, maybe six feature films at the same time. And the common value at stake seems to be trust. There are other values in the films, of course, but that's the most common value in all of those. I don't think I'll ever be able to write like a fiction on climate w- related to climate change because it's not about climate change; it's related to it. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to write it without trust as a value at stake yeah. because it's so tightly connected: trust in people, but also trust trust in politics or uh, um, like big values. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, trust in your message as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. It, what you were just saying is, if you look at what David Attenborough is doing right now mm. in the past That's cu- powerful. couple of years, yeah. he's released three documentaries mm. that have changed a lot of people's minds. Mm. Um, that basically led to a, a blanket ban on plastic bags, um, <laughs> which uh, that wasn't on the cards before. Mm. And, and he did that alone, effectively. And now with Our Planet, mm. it's another voice. And also there was a, a documentary last week. I think it's called Climate Change, The Question. Mm. Um, so yeah, art, art can definitely get straight to the heart of the matter. Mm. I mean, if you're someone like David Attenborough. <laughs> well, we are very happy for your work in different sections with jewelry, with literature, with film, and Klaus with your project Pressure. We're going to move down to Plaza Major, uh, you and I, Klaus, and, and look at the posters for a bit. Thank you so much for your work and um, keep it up. And we'll be following you and yeah. be interested to look at your stuff, your beautiful jewelry. I've seen it online and read your book when it pub- is published and watch your films. So. Keep us posted, and uh, we'll just keep uh, keep an eye on these wonderful people doing their utmost for for the future of the next generation. Thank Thank you. you.